Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. He's coming up to lead us in Veterans Day things for a few minutes here. And how many of you appreciate Sarge this morning? shows up, stand up. Everybody see you if you're helpful or whatever. 
Remain standing. Don't sit down. Remain standing until it's all over. And then I'll give you orders from then. <laughs> Shoot, Luke.
station now. Uh, this is called, the lady who made this calls it the quilt of valor. And she wants, when she makes this up, she wants to give this to a veteran. I'm a recipient of one of those beautiful blankets. And now, we've got somebody else that we're going to give one to. She has a hobby of making blankets, just what she does. And in her heart, every time I turn around, the last couple of years, she comes up and she wants to give a blanket to a veteran. Would you mind standing up? She's real bashful. She doesn't want to come up here. Give her a hand. Yeah. All right, now, who's the veteran that's going to get this this time? Clay Sickles. Come on, Clay. United States. Give a speech. God bless America. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we also have two very special guests with us this morning that are going to be uh, sharing song and sign with us. Would you welcome Journey and Nathaniel Copeland? <laughs> this today, Every Soul Matters. And that every Soul Matters is one of the core values of our church. And today I want to look at it in a little bit of a different view. Of course, we always think about uh, souls coming to Christ and, uh, you know, the obvious importance of that. But I want to share with you some things today pertaining to the soul of man, uh, the soul, uh, as we would uh, generally define that uh, as we talk about mind, will, and emotions. And uh, our soul is very important, and the care that we take of our soul is very, very important. And how many of you have been through stuff this week? Can I see your hand? Yeah, uh, most everybody goes through stuff, and stuff affects 
our mind, will, emotions. And it, you know, we talk about body, soul, and spirit. We understand that we are made up of body, soul, and spirit. We know that we need to have our bodies healthy. We know that we need our spirit to be healthy, our spirit man to be healthy. We, we want to be in right relationship with God, and we need to have our soul healthy also. Amen. But uh, we know that our body is affected by a lot of things, but I, I want to ask the question today, what about the soul? I wonder what, what affects the soul? And I would propose to you today that there are a lot of things as we talk about the mind, will, and emotions. There are a lot of things that really affect us, and they have... Uh, you know, if we're not really careful, those things on this journey called life that we go through, uh, they, they get a hold of the soul, they get a grip of the soul, and they try to pull us down. But how many of you know that we're overcomers through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Would you give him praise this morning? I will tell you that my soul has been greatly affected by the things I've faced over the last several months. Um, there are things that we all go through, things that I go through. I, I said this here a while back. I put my pants on one leg at a time just like the rest of you do. And so I go through stuff just because I'm a preacher, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that I'm immune uh, to the things that happen in life. But I have gained... Over the last few months, I want you to understand the heart of this message today. I have gained a new understanding of the value of a healthy and prosperous soul. Are you all with me this morning? I've gained a new understanding of the necessity of caring for the soul. And here again, today I'm relating this to how we generally would define the soul as the mind, will, and emotions. How many of you have emotions? Uh, how many of you men have a wife that, no, no, let me move on this morning. I have, there's just some things, Brother Linda, you should not say while preaching. And, uh, but I've gained a new revelation to the vast tribulation that the soul endures in each of our lives. Because we're all in this thing together. We all deal with new things every day, seems like, but... I want to share this this morning with you. I have gained a new depth of understanding of the love of God. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said? I've gained a new depth of understanding of the love of God and the value of His Word. When we, when we think about the Bible, it's not just a good book that we can read. There is such truth here and there is something about the way it lights our path. As we hide it in our hearts. Amen. And uh, there's, there's about to be something put on the screen in just a moment. And I, I want you to look at this very closely. It talks about the trials that we go through. When you go through fiery trials as a new believer. I think it's going to be on the screen anyway. We're going to find out in a minute. When you go through fiery trials as a true believer, you will always... Please hear me today. You will always gain new insight into the love of God and the truth of His Word. Are y'all with me? Look at that again. When you go through fiery trials, not as just a person on planet Earth, but as a true believer who has accepted Jesus Christ, has God in their life, is walking uh, in the ways of God, when you go through really intense trials, and you're a genuine believer, you will always, every single time, gain new insight into the love of God and the truth of His Word. Um, I have found this to be, uh, not only is that biblical, but uh, I have found this to be such a, a true happening in my own life over the years. We've all gone through stuff, as I mentioned a while ago, but every time since I've been born again, Every time that has happened, something out of the Word of God has come to life like it never had been before. You know, it, it, it's sad sometimes that we have to go through trials for things to be revealed to us, but that's just the way it is. If you start looking through and start naming all people in the Bible, they went through severe trials, and it was because of that. It doesn't matter if we want to go all the way back and talk about Adam, if we want to talk about Joseph, if we want to talk about the Apostle Paul, 
Uh, if we want to talk about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for us. And it was, it, it was uh, in that that we were able to see in the Word of God the relationship that he had with his Father. And aren't you thankful for that relationship today? Give God praise if you will. So my proposition today, again, is very simple and very concise and I hope very clear today. It is that your soul matters. What you go through and how, how things are affecting your soul, how you deal with those things, uh, it really matters. And so we need to care for our soul. There are people here today uh, that have lost loved ones recently and our hearts go out to you, Amanda, and uh, various ones that have lost loved ones in the, in the last little while. And, and uh, you know, those things, all of those things affect our soul. And that's why we have to stay close to God. When we go through something, it doesn't mean we quit praying. It means we pray more. When we go through stuff, it doesn't mean we quit seeking God. It means we seek God with more fervency in our lives. When we go through things, it doesn't mean that we just give up. It means that we press on like we've never pressed on before. You say, well, preacher, is this just a, a self-help kind of message today? No, this is the Word of God today. We are living here on planet Earth. We have a job to do, as we'll look at in a few minutes. We have a purpose on this Earth. We don't all know what our purpose is. We know that we see through a glass darkly or dimly. I wish I knew sometimes. I, I've said many times, I wish I knew what the plan of God was for my life. But we don't always know that. So we press on. We do what we can do. We seek God with a whole heart. And in the end, I promise you, God will get the glory out of your life. Amen. Give him praise again today, if you will. Before I go any further into this, though, let me talk for just a minute about the heart. We've heard it said many times, uh, let's get to the heart of the matter. Well, I think there's some, some truth to that when we realize that what we're really talking about is getting to the core of the matter, getting to the center of it. Now, I want to go to Jeremiah chapter number 17 this morning and talk about, look at something that the Lord said that I think is very pertinent, very viable, very vital to our lives. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 10, the Bible says, I, the Lord, search the heart. He said, I search the heart. Now, on the surface, I don't like the next few words there. He said, I, the Lord, search the heart and I test the mind. How many of you just love it when your mind gets tested? How many of you love it when your mind seems like it's, it's in a vice, it's in a grip, and you can't seem to get, get through that? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. By the way, this verse many times I think is viewed as a statement pertaining to judgment, but I would personally wonder today if it can be a picture to us, as a revelation to us, of the love of God that is, that is a part of the design purpose that God has in our lives. If we are going to fulfill the purpose of God in our lives, this goes with it. We will have our hearts searched by the Lord and our minds will be tested. Doesn't that just give you goosebumps today? It's just, oh, isn't it a wonderful thing to know that your mind is going to be tested and, and uh, your heart is going to be searched and all those things. You know, here again, Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. What is God preparing for you and what is God preparing you for? What is God preparing you for? You say, well, I'm already, I've done everything I'm going to do for God. If that's your attitude, you've missed it all together. Because God is still preparing, I believe this with all my heart, God is still preparing us for something in life. If we have quit looking for God to do something with us, we're probably missing what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Amen. Thank you for those seven amens today. And one all right from over in the corner today. The heart is the core of the soul. Stay with me this morning. We've heard it said, how many of you have ever, ever heard it said, uh, well, someone broke my heart? How many of you heard that said? Somebody broke my heart. Uh, maybe there's really a truth to that statement today. Maybe the heart 
really can be wounded and broken. Now y'all stay with me. Perhaps the heart really can be wounded and broken. Now I want you to look at the other side of this for a minute. What does God get glory from? God gets glory from healing those things which are broken and fixing those things which it would seem can't be fixed. With God, all things are possible. So with everything we face, whether it's a broken heart, whether it's a messed up life, whether it seems like uh, your life has just been the, uh, the recipient of, of, of overwhelming torture, uh, heartbreak and all those things, God gets glory by healing those things. And those very things that you have gone through in your life, there are training grounds for God to do something with the purpose of your life in the future because God wants to fulfill what he started before you were ever born. Before your parents ever thought about you, God had a plan for your life. Amen? Amen. In Psalm 147, in verse number 3, the Bible says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God heals the brokenhearted and He binds up their wounds. I view a wound as some injury that leaves the flesh exposed. Okay, so we're going through life. Things happen, life happens, stuff happens. And uh, what happens generally when we go through a fiery trial or when somebody breaks our heart, when somebody wounds us, when somebody does us wrong, when somebody does somebody else wrong that affects us, there is a wound, there is part of the flesh that is exposed and then Jesus Christ comes along. Amen. Are you all with me this morning? Amen. He binds up our wound. You see, if here, you've got to understand this. Every time I have been wounded in life, Every time. And furthermore, every time you have been wounded in life as a child of God, the Spirit of God is already there to start binding it up and healing the wound, taking care of it, putting the balm of Gilead on it, making things right again. Are y'all with me this morning? Give Jesus praise in this place. Amen. Obviously, something that exposes the flesh hurts. Something that exposes the flesh hurts leaves us feeling vulnerable. Something that exposes the flesh sometimes is embarrassing. Something that exposes the flesh is something that we oftentimes, because uh, a few of us in this place still have a little bit of a carnal nature. Amen. Go ahead and point at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you this morning. <laughs> but God also, and y'all don't want to hear this this morning, but God also wants us to let patience have her perfect work in our lives. You say, preacher, don't be praying for patience for me. I'm not praying for patience for you, but I am telling you that we need to have patience to make it through this life or else we're going to be going around the mountain 40 years from now doing the same old thing. Amen? I read an article recently that said from a scientific standpoint, a person can literally die from a broken heart. I mean, I... From a scientific standpoint, I read an article that said somebody could literally die from a broken heart. The heart is the core of the soul. Therefore, your heart condition affects the soul. So if your heart is broken, if your heart is wounded, if your heart feels like it's dying, it can affect your soul, thereby affecting every part of your being. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let me back up and explain something. The heart and the soul, they work together. I said the heart is the core of the soul, but they work together, yet they are separate, much like our physical heart works within our physical bodies. We have a physical body, but within that, we have a physical heart. If the heart fails or gets sick, the body fails and gets sick and weak. Do you understand that? If, if the heart is weak, the rest of the body doesn't work well. Amen. If the heart is damaged, the rest of the body doesn't work well. If the heart is missing something, the rest of the body doesn't work well because the heart affects, in this case, the soul. The heart affects the body in a physical way. Amen? One of the things that we often fail to realize is that people, even Christians, though, are walking around this world in a wounded state. And God Almighty 
wants to heal them. God Almighty wants to set them free. God Almighty wants to restore them. There are people in this room this morning that you are walking around in a wounded state because of something that has happened in your life. But I've come to tell you today that Almighty God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost is here to fix you up today and bind those wounds up. Amen? Amen. I want to make a statement that I know uh, some of you in here may think this is going to sound a little bit crazy coming from me, unless I could prove it by the Word of God, and I can, but here it is. The soul, even though it is part of the body, it has its own makeup like unto the body. Okay, let me share something with you. Study the Scripture, and you will find out that the soul, some, some of you will have Scriptures that will start rolling on in your mind. Some of you will... will automatically come to a realization that the soul has an appetite. The soul gets thirsty. The soul can breathe. The soul can fight. The soul can praise. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. Things that are happening in the soul are very vital and very important to your overall well-being, very important to the overall well-being of the ministry that you have for the life that you lead, for the people that you come in contact with. If we go through life and tragedy comes our way and, and we don't press on, then we've missed the whole point because God tries to teach us something. I believe this very firmly. Through every tragedy that we go through, God tries to teach us something. And when our heart is wounded, when our soul is in turmoil, still there, God is there to bind up the wounds. Amen. But the Bible also speaks and says the soul can die. The Bible even says that your soul can be put into prison. I've just come to tell you this morning that my soul is not going to be in prison. Amen. My soul is going to be healthy. My soul is going to be thirsting after God. My soul is hungry for God. My soul is going to be fed by God. My soul is going to be a recipient of the righteousness of God. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, would you give him praise at the end of the day? But if your soul is poor, the rest of you will be poor. Here again, it's all about an overall health that seems to come out of the soul. Our mind, will, and emotions, as we're talking about today. If your soul is in anguish, the rest of you will be in anguish. If your soul is all messed up, the rest of you will be all messed up. If your soul is bitter... If your soul is broken because of the things that you've gone through in life, it will affect your bones. It will affect your body. I wonder sometimes, I understand that things we eat, things we drink, the air that we breathe perhaps affects us in a lot of ways. But I also believe that spiritually speaking, the things, even the emotions that we deal with in our lives, they affect our bodies and they, they in turn become wounds to our bodies that we need God to heal. Amen. I want a healthy soul. Amen. Amen. I want to read 3 John chapter number 1 and verse number 2 this morning. The Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you prosper. This is very familiar to us. But he said, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. He said, look at that again. If you have your Bibles, it's on the screen now. Blood, I pray that you may prosper. How many of you want to prosper? Amen. And be in health. Amen. How many of you want to be in health? Amen. He said that you may prosper in a few things and all things and be in health. But watch this. Just as, Brother Jamie, your soul prospers. You want, to, you want to prosper in all things and you want to be in health. We all want those things, but we need to realize we need our soul to be healthy. Amen? So everything outside of the soul is affected by the condition of our soul. Therefore, we have to guard it. We have to protect it. We have to nurture it from harm. You say, well, how, preacher, can I do that? I'll tell you how we can do that. We just stay connected to God. You say, well, but are you, are you saying that if I, stay protect, uh, if I stay connected to God, I'll never have to deal with anything in this life? Not at all. 
I'm saying we are in this world, but we don't have to be a part of this world. Amen. My citizenship is in heaven. Amen. My, my trust is in Jesus Christ, my Lord, in heaven. Amen. I have the Spirit of God on the inside of me. So I don't have to be so affected. I don't have to be completely torn down by the things of this world. Amen. God gets the glory every single time. Amen. But our soul is susceptible. Don't, don't, don't miss this this morning. Our soul is susceptible to brokenness. Our soul is susceptible to fear. Our soul, there are a lot of people walking around today. There are a lot of people walking around today with fear in their lives. I'm afraid of this person. I'm afraid of this outcome. I'm afraid that they're going to find out what I did. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. I'm afraid that if this happens, that's going to happen. We've got to get free from fear, church. You realize we are a part of the body of Christ. We are Christ's children. Therefore, we need to be living an overcoming life through Him. Amen? But the soul is susceptible to all those things. The soul is susceptible to worry. The soul is susceptible to anguish. The soul, as I said, is susceptible to fear. There's all these things that go on in our lives. I've come to tell you, church, we can be free from all those things in Jesus' name. Amen? When we think about people in the Bible, as a matter of fact, when we think about, let me pick one for just a minute. When we think about David in the Bible, he instructed his soul. You realize that? He instructed, he told his soul what to do. He commanded his soul, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. He questioned his soul. I want to look at Psalm chapter 42 and verse number 5. I'm not sure we're getting all of them on the screen today. We may be having technical problems. Psalm chapter 42 and verse number 5, if you have your Bible today. David said, he questioned his soul. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why is it? You know, people say, well, you don't talk to yourself, do you, preacher? I must admit, I talk to myself every once in a while. David talked to himself. He said, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. What a statement today. Hope in God. When your soul is struggling, when your soul is in anguish, the scripture gives us a definition today of victory. It says hope in God. No matter what you're facing today, no matter, please hear me, no matter what you are facing today, some of you are facing terrible trials this morning in this room. Hope in God and all will work out fine. Amen. He said, hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. You know what? There are some of us in this place today that need to tell our souls, quit thinking about those things. Quit dwelling on those things. Amen? Quit desiring those things. There was not a single amen when I said that. <laughs> you know, you've struck a nerve, Brother Rodney, when everything gets really, really quiet. I didn't mean to stare at you when I said that. It just happened. <laughs> when things happen in our lives, sometimes we've got to stop and we just got to say, my hope is in you, God. My trust is in you, God. My faith is in you, God. The whole, if everything around me uh, dissipates, disappears, falls down, my hope is in you, God. I was reminded recently as I was going through a trial, I was reminded, you know, I'm just kind of questioning uh, God about some things, trying to do some soul searching myself. And anyway, it was as though I could hear the, the voice of God coming from the pages of this book saying something like, well, where were you at when I measured out uh, the width of the seas? Where were you at whenever I created the high mountains? Where were you at when Mount Everest was raised up? Where were you at when I formed the air? Where were you at? You see, in all the things that we face, God is still God. In everything that we go through in life, God is still God. In every trial that we face in life, God is still God. In everything that comes against us and tries to wound us and, and brutally treat us, God is still God. Church, give Him praise again if you will. Here again, you say, well, only crazy people speak to themselves. <clears throat> Maybe we have it all wrong. Maybe it's wise and healthy people that speak to themselves. Maybe. David, the man after God's own heart, 
understood that he had to affect his soul positively in a positive manner. I want to look at Psalm chapter 42 again, verse number 5. He said, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Hope, say that with me, hope in God. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, say, hope in God. Amen. There was something going on on the inside of David that he could not understand. I've been there. You've been there. Something going on on the inside of David and on the inside of us that we don't understand. I just want you to be brutally honest today. And let me see your hand if you've gone through something before that you did not understand what was happening. You did not understand what was going on. Same thing happened. David questioned his own soul and then he instructed it in the ways of God. I believe it's okay if we question God on things. Now, I don't get down on God. Please don't misunderstand me today. But I question God sometimes. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And all these things. But in the midst of that, I can still instruct myself in the ways of God because of faith. If I know the Word of God, and the Word of God then is able to speak to me, God's Spirit is able to speak to me, if God Almighty has to speak from heaven and tell me something, I just need to be a recipient, a willing vessel in his hands. Amen. Stay close to God. He will stay close to you. Amen. David even asked God to speak directly to his soul. We'll look at Psalm chapter 35 and verse number 3. The Bible says, Also draw out the spear and, and watch this. The Bible says, and Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Sometimes we feel like that. Sometimes it seems like we're being bombarded from every side. Stop those who pursue me and say to, what's this last sentence? Say to my soul, I am your salvation. We've heard today that God says he is our hope. We've heard today that God says he is our salvation, which is another way of saying that he is also our deliverer. Amen. He is our hope. He's our help. He's our, our he's everything that we need. Amen. I'm teaching you this today though, because the condition of your soul affects your ability to hear God and to listen to His voice. And if there's one thing we need in our lives, each one of us, it's to hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah seventeen ten again says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. A healthy soul is able to hear God. Please understand what I'm about to say. A healthy soul is able to hear God and therefore be able to be led to the next destination and the next level that God has for your life. If you don't maintain a healthy soul, though, you're going to always be held back. Amen? Stay healthy in God. Amen? Hopefully we all want to have a clearer insight and a keener insight into the things of God, the will of God. We want to bear good fruit. We want to live in abundance. We want our enemies to be defeated. That's a good place to shout amen right there. Amen. We want all of our relationships to be healthy. We want our future to be blessed. Some of these things that I've been talking about for a while, and we pull it together, some of these things that we have to understand, they all work as one unit. I want my life I want my soul, I want everything to be healthy in my life so that ultimately everything around me is in good working order. Amen. Look at John chapter number 12 and verse number 27. Jesus spoke this himself. Sometimes we picture Jesus only as the Son of God and not as also being here in a physical body on planet earth uh, when he was here 2,000 years ago. But I want you to look at what happened. Jesus said when he was walking on planet earth, as we're walking on planet earth today, we're walking by faith, we're listening to God. But Jesus said in the midst of that, he said, now my soul, Jesus said, speaking of himself, my soul is troubled. My soul. Can you imagine? This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Messiah. And he says, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Let me explain something here that may help you in your prayer life this morning. Jesus prayed often, but he didn't always get a reply to every statement. 
Jesus prayed a lot. Did y'all hear that? Jesus prayed a lot. He is our example. We should pray a lot. We should pray without ceasing. Amen. He prayed sort of basically like we do. He prayed in faith. But he did not, according to what we know in Scripture, he did not always get a reply. It wasn't always like this dialogue of, of him saying to his father, I love you, father. And then this voice come back and said, I love you, son. Amen. It's like when I tell Joshua, if I tell Joshua, if I say, I love you, Joshua, or I love you, son, he would nearly always come back and say, I love you too, dad. And I mean, I, I like that dialogue. I like that relationship that we have. But as we're praying, as Jesus prayed here, we didn't always find his scripture. Go search it out yourself. God didn't always speak back to him in some audible voice. But Jesus knew that he was still God. It's a, it's, here again, it's about our prayer life. It's about faith when we pray. Faith when we seek God. Faith when we go through trials. Faith when our soul is troubled. We have to know that God Almighty is still there for us. Amen? But in this particular case, in John chapter 12, in this particular case, he got a verbal response from his father. John 12, 27, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, verse number 28, glorify your name. I love this though. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. A voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it. Again, I have to read the next verse there. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. That would be a good part to go in the book of Revelation probably, Sister Bonnie. The people that stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. I'll just tell you today, we all go through stuff. Our soul gets, uh, our soul goes through trials sometimes. But when we have faith, God Almighty is going to show up every time. He's going to teach us something new. He's going to increase our faith. He's going to prepare us for a new level in Him. He's going to prepare us and He's going to show us what's on the other side. Amen. I'm ready to see what God's going to do in each of our lives. Amen. Give God praise today in this place. It's a wonderful thing when we pray and we get a, you know, an instant answer back from heaven. But whether I do or not, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Almighty God is on my side. He is by my side. He's with me everywhere I go. Amen. No matter the anguish that Jesus felt in his body, no matter the anguish that he felt in his soul, Jesus Christ, he pressed on. Amen. The enemy will often attack your soul before he does anything else. You go back even to the Garden of Eden. We could look at a lot of different things. In the Garden of Eden, the enemy attacked the soul to entice Adam and Eve. The fruit looked good, the Bible says. It was desirable and it was able to make one wise. The enemy was working on the soul. Jesus said his own soul was troubled. The reason that many people, y'all hear me this morning, please. The reason that many people backslide, the, many, the reason that many people uh, face things beyond what they should, and the reason that many people run here and there always looking for something new, the reason, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to be careful how I say it, the reason a lot of people even commit suicide is because their soul is in anguish and their soul is troubled. God wants to heal the wounded soul. God wants to heal the walking wounded in our lives. Amen. God wants to heal the walking wounded in our town and in our county and in our nation. Amen. God wants to heal and bind up the broken heart of today. That's my prayer this morning. God, heal up. Heal up those things that are broken in our area. If we want to fix a lot of things, one of the first things we could do this morning is pray to Almighty God because Almighty God is going to be the one responsible to do that. Yes, He'll do it through us many, many times, but we need God to move in our land. Amen? Amen. I want to read the last verse again. Uh, well, I talked to you about a while ago. John 12, 12 and 27. Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. He said, But for this purpose, I came to this very hour. For this purpose, you are here today. To give God glory 
and lift up his name, to worship him, to see the oppressed set free, to see Jesus Christ lifted up and glorified on planet Earth. Amen. 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 We need a healthy soul. Would you stand with me this morning? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing.